Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I want to talk about uh, the making of drums and fretless bass. This is a, a sort of a jam-ish track that I had made. If you haven't heard it, um, the original will be linked in the description. You can go pick it up. Um, it is a free download. So if you like it, you can just go download it. Some, the SoundCloud link will be in the description of that video. Um, anyway, um, this, is, this will be mostly about the drums because I think that's what, that's what people are more interested in. But... Um, I'll talk about everything else really quickly just because it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this whole point was about me recording a fretless bass, which... As you can see, it's not necessarily heavily edited, but it's pretty, pretty edited. Um, I basically just recorded a take of me noodling around and then just kind of arranged it in ways that made sense um, around a particular theme, the theme being... That. Um, this is a fretless bass. It's an SX, SX Ursa, uh, six string fretless that I got from Rondo Music. It costs $160. So I definitely think I got my money's worth. I'd actually like show you what it sounded like in playing and all that stuff, except that I have already switched out the strings and, um, the strings that they came with originally are, uh, round flat wounds which um, are really smooth strings. And their point is that um, they do two things. One, it's easier for you to move, you know, slide your, your hand up and down it, which you do because it's a fretless bass. And then two, being a fretless bass, you're on the fretboard with the strings and wound wounds wound will do some damage to it over time. I, however, don't care about damage because it's a $160 bass. So I put round wounds on it so I give me more metal. But um, it doesn't sound anything like this anymore. Um, without the effects, which are very minimal, it sounds like this. <laughs> Got an EQ here. The first step here's the Edison, which is what I use to record the input. And then I have a Maximus just to compress it. I have a filter, which I, I, I use sparingly. Got some reverb, some tiniest bit of chorus, and then the post EQ. That's just, that's just the bass. Then I have these chord things, which are so minimal. There's a, um, they're basically just chords. I, I'm using Valhalla Shimmer, which is a really badass reverb plugin. And, um, I have I have the feedback on a little bit with the shift all the way up to twelve, so it's that that sort of ringy, uh, organish sound that we're hearing, and the high frequencies are a result of that. And then I have EQ and post, which is the controller just the bandpass, which is what this automation clip is doing. Now the pattern that I have is a little bit odd because I I basically do that whenever this is playing. I wanted to swell from low to high, so I just made a swell from low to high. Ah, so this is what this was. This is um, a preset that I used in my track Empire a long time ago, the creepy chord. Uh, this was originally a plucked chord sound. I just turned the pluck off and the, the low pass turned up a little bit. It's got a really high prism setting, like really high. And uh, then it's got a little bit of uh, volume, like going on the volume enveloping which I, I really i rarely ever do um a phaser is kind of engaged this is really a sort of like a, a mess sound it's made it's made to be just wide and messy i didn't really want it to be very together I just wanted that there's just background coolness above the drums and the bass to me importance. So let's talk about the drums. This is Superior Drummer. Some people actually thought that this was real recorded drums and I'm a little flattered by that, but I also find it kind of funny because I did like the least amount of processing on these drums I have ever done on Superior Drummer drums. 
So basically what happened is that I made this pattern. And then I copied it over a whole bunch of times. And then I basically put it all over the whole thing. And then I merged them all into one clip, which you can do by right clicking this. Things are going to uh, merge pattern clips and it'll merge any clip into one clip. Doesn't have to be the same source. It could be different sources. They'll they all get merged to one pattern clip. So now I got a big old un unobstructed, just continuous drum pattern. You can even see that the re repetitions of the uh, of the patterns and in the and the, the velocity velocity meters. The intro I did specifically just kind of cut up. Now, let's talk about Superior Drummer. So, Superior Drummer is the best acoustic drum library slash sampler you'll ever see, ever. Um, by default, it comes with this uh, library called the NY Avatar Library. Um, I don't know what number they're on now. It was different when I bought it, but um, I got the Metal Foundry expansion because I wanted new metal. And I'm like, oh, it's got metal. Yeah, the people that I know that had done good stuff have used that back, which is why I got it. And it's full, like the way that the way that Superior Drummer works is that um, you get, you know, you get your kits and you can individually set up drums and set up different like snares and kick drums and cymbals and a humongous, unbelievably vast and ver varied like selection of instruments for drums. And then you get the mixer. So the re this like the reason why Superior Drummer is just the, the greatest thing ever is because um, the samples that we're hearing come out of Superior Drummer are dry, naked, unprocessed microphone recordings. They went to some super bitchin' studio, recorded this drum kit. They set up the kit. They actually set up all the mics, and then they recorded all the individual drums for each individual mic. And that's how it's arranged. It's arranged in mic positions, not by instruments. So here you have kick drum in, uh, right and left, because you have to do kick, kick drums. And some of them even have doubles, like the actual left and right recording kick drum is pretty badass and then in and out for each kick drum snare top condenser dynamic snare bottom condenser dynamic uh snare trash is off and hats rack time one rack time two rack time three four time one four time two overhead overhead drummer ambient close ambient far mono close mono far chamber these are all the mic positions that were set up when they recorded the drums now the, the badass part of this, which I actually didn't, to I didn't even utilize at all in this recording, is that um, uh, you can have an option to set bleed, so you can have the snare bleed into like the the toms or whatever. And I, I, by default, actually, a lot of the stuff bleeds into the snare bottom. That the kick drum will bleed in the snare bottom. Like if I, which I guess I can solo through here. Where's bottom? Play. So we can hear the kick drum bleeding into the snare mic. Now, that's not just the kick drum sample like being filtered a little bit to fit and sound like it's from the snare. That's literally the kick drum was recorded from the snare's bottom mic position. And there is a kick drum sample for every single mic position. The overheads, the chamber, the toms, all of it. So if you wanted to, you could actually you can actually set this up to work like a real acoustic drum recording, which is part of the reason why this is the best acoustic drum library ever. Um, as although as, also as a result, the li like the library itself is fucking huge. It's like this alone, like this uh, the expansion is like thirty gigs. It's incredible, but it's so good. Like in part of the reason why it sounds like acoustic drums is because for all intents and purposes, it totally is, and not just because of the mic position bullshit, but because um, like it's super expressive and also just full of every every articulation and every velocity layer ever made. Like the snare, for example, you hear all the ghosting notes cut this all happening forever. Like, it's not just round robining. Like it's not just that they're, they're running through different things. It's actually different. Like the the velocity layering is is pretty absurd. If I were to just. Uh, and that's just on the center position. We also have edge position. Rim shots. Sticks. Flams. And 
jockeys are for uh, electronic drums and stuff. Not really. They're not really different articulations. But um, like so, it just that's just a snare, and it has all this craziness. Same deal with Tom. There's even a stick, like a rim shot for Toms. How cool is that? Hats and rides and Chris's crashables. Like the the expressive the expressiveness is completely perfect. And like you can you can really fool people with this. Like if you're if you're if you set it up like super meticulously and like you know record it like properly and don't get super super duper like uh, super processed about it. And that's pretty much what I did with this with this particular um I keep calling it recording this track. Um, I didn't do, I, I didn't, I really didn't do a lot to it. Like I set up, I set up the kit and then I have a compressor, like compressor on the, on the whole thing, all of it together. And then I'll also cue it a little bit. Normally when I use superior drummer, I, you, you set, I go to here in the mixer, right click this and then say multi-channel. And then that sets all the outs to individual, individual outs. And then I go to here and I say processing automatic outputs and then it sets out like you can see, it tells you like what number the mics are for for everything, and it'll it'll just output each individual mic's mic position into its own mixer insert, which is how I do, which is also how you would do a regular drum recording anyway. So like you could you could actually, that's why it's particularly powerful. But for this, I didn't do it, and that's because for a lot of this this sort of break beaty stuff, um, that that sort of like hyper meticulous processing is not something you do on something that would probably usually just be a drum loop that you found somewhere, right? So to get that sort of, that not necessarily old school feel, but like that particular kind of feel, I decided to, to make it a real, real simple like process. Like this part probably threw people for a loop. Like it just sounds so like like, like something a really good drummer would do. Now, in terms of the actual like process, the, the compression that I applied to it, the big a big part of what I wanted to have happen is I wanted to have that sort of compressed sidechainy feel to it. And so what I did is I, I basically turned on the compression like this, and then you see this little bump here. Basically, it's bringing up things that would normally go down faster. So that that sort of round in fullness and transient sound, like soft transientness, is what that kind of feel is. But also a really long release time. So the, the long release time is key. Like that's how a, a big part of that, that business works. Um, I did do some changes in the actual internal mixer. Like I turned down um, the overheads. Like I also turned on a lot of stuff because like by default, the only things that are on are the overheads and the ambient uh, close mics. So I turned, turned down to those overheads. I engaged an additional overhead and also engaged the ambient far mics. And like that's pretty much it. Like I didn't do much else. I actually didn't do a single thing else to, to the mixing anyway. In here, you're for each individual instrument in Superior Drummer, you're able to uh, determine a, a, a number of things. You can determine the pitch of the instrument um, by a number of different options. And then you also determine, determine the envelope. So here I actually have the envelope turned on so that the snare doesn't last a long time. If I just turn it off, it's still pretty fast, but like, and if it wasn't for the compression, it'd probably be perfectly fast. But because there is the compression engaged, it's longer than it would be otherwise. So then I'm turning it off manually, keeping it short. Same deal with the kick. And this tom as well. This tom I also pitched up a bit. And also this ride I pitched up a lot. And I do that a lot. I do that for uh, this ride symbol in particular. I like this ride symbol a lot. And so like normally. Versus. So, pitching is good. I also turned off the layer limits option here. Um, but, I mean, this is basically the the unlimited amount, which basically means that um, it loads it loads a whole crap ton of velocity layers. That's what that basically does. So over here, it tells you how much you have loaded for how much RAM you're using. And this kit, just this tiny minimal kit, 
um, is using uh, 1.3 gigs of space. I can go into 16-bit mode. Right now I'm in 24-bit mode. I can go into 16-bit mode. And um, for most things, like most processing that you'll, you're, like, you're likely to do with a kit like this, 16-bit is probably fine. But um, for this particular one, I was actually um, leaving a more open and airy and more, more dynamic range, at least in the drums. So that, that meant that using 24-bit was a bit more beneficial to me in this very specific instance. Yeah. Now, on the on the on the um, idea of this sort of old school processing sort of stuff, where we're talking about lots of uh, lots of compression, obvious compression, like slow, impactful, like washy compression, that kind of stuff, like especially obvious right here, like that snare hit or the cymbal hit. Damn. That right there as well. I kind of like just buttery smooth, but like expansive and explosive symbol compression is is it can, you know you can either do it with side chaining or you can do it with like particularly uh, slow release times on compression. So on this on this max on this master, I have a limiter, just a plain regular limiter, and like it, it's actually set a little bit, a little bit lower than it would be by default, but like it's it's there. So that when the peaks happen, which there aren't really that many because it's not very loud. We get that sort of slow and obvious compression result. And now after that is when I put the Maximus on because I didn't want to make it a little bit louder than what it was. But I didn't want to make it so much louder. But I also still wanted the the um, feeling of the ham-fisted, heavy-handed like compression type. <laughs> I, I push this maybe like a 10% as much as I do regular tracks. Like you, you, you could still see peaks below zero dB with some spacing between them. Like that's not a regular thing that I do. And, but that's, that's how this kind of stuff works. That's how it sounds. It's not meant to blow your face off. It's meant to be cool, but to have groove. You're meant to get into it without feeling like you're dead. So I compress it accordingly. Yeah. So as far as writing grooves like these, that's a pretty a big, a big pretty big point. Like how do I what is what's this? Like how does this work? Well, I mean, how to how to write a groove is pretty much you listen to a groove you want to write and then you figure out what to do with that. Like how that works. But um I knew coming into this that I wanted to have a lot of ghost notes. And I wanted to do that a lot. And in FL, I mean, doing this kind of stuff was pretty straightforward. Like I wanted I wanted to have like like do that kind of like old school like off off beat kind of deal. Here's a super super simple version of version of what I'm, I I was doing. Super simple version of what I was doing is what I said. Words I used them. So there's that, and like I could I could put in like some hats. And like it's important to every so often to go a little bit off like that, a little bit sort of not quite on, and also like change it up a little bit with how you're placing placing things. And now we're we're starting to get like a feel of the beat, and then you know the ghost notes, and so the ghost notes pretty much go in between sixteenths, uh, so like or in between eighths rather. So like if our eighths are all like here then our ghost notes want to go here just in general they don't I mean i don't want you don't want to have them all just there all the time but it's like where you when you put them you're probably going to put them there there are some exceptions and those exceptions are pretty much whenever you do something and they think it sounds good that's pretty much all exceptions ever all the time partially this is random but i'm just putting it in there just to make it to make it, make it do it
So now we're noticing that, oh, wow, there's like, that's fine, but this velocity, like, there's no velocity difference at all. So it sounds real weird mechanical. Well, I mean, that's pretty, pretty simply solved. Now, what I could do is that for the main hits of the kick is there, that they're, those are always max. So like here, here, like these original snare hits that I put down before um, the ghost notes, all gives me maxed. So now already we can hear a difference in like the expressiveness, and then the ghost notes get down, get brought down pretty, pretty hard. Already, that's a massive improvement. It's ba you're basically filling in space, and it's making it sound making it sound much more complex than it already was. Um, and like this, this this arrangement of doing that is pretty much all, all there is to it. Um, now, with this idea of, of having infinite velocity layers, that's necessarily infinite, but it's a lot more than you're used to using. Being max all the time is all well and good, but also sometimes you can you can feel like you want to like play around with it. Now, the same thing sort of applies with the, the idea of ghost notes on the snare. That's sort of like, it's not necessarily really ghost notes on the kick, but just like not as hard hits on the kick. Like, um, these are all like on the main, on the main, like beat, the beating path, huh, right? So like I, I could put some like before and after, maybe a little bit. I'm putting it on, on, on B2 here because a superior drum works on like a version of general MIDI in terms of like how it arranges the sounds and general MIDI makes these three notes all kick. And, the, and if I had two kick drums, it would make these uh, the right kick and the left kick, but that's why I'm able to do this. And for this illustration, pur for illustrative purposes, it makes this particularly easy. Let's make these lower. And you can make more interesting beats that way. Now, um, another op option we have for the uh, the snares is the uh, this idea of the roughs. So we have the, the, the size six, which I actually almost made the main hit in this track, but um, we also have that business. Every once in a while, instead of doing a ghost note, I'll do that. Because like, like, as, well, as well, you could do that manually, just fine. Like you could, make a roll and like it'll work it'll totally work but sometimes it's still not really as organic as what could just be like a record like a recorded roll an actual drummer rolling something which is always the result rather always the case when it comes to uh you know electronic writing And such. So that's kind of neat. Now, like, if it, this is called that's completed the completed riff. Like, it's not necessarily completely the completed beat, but let's say it is. I uh, like when I had made the first the first beat. I, that point was basically this point. Like this, these four bars was the whole beat. And like I said, I copied and pasted it a whole bunch of times. I just made variations wherever I thought there needed to be variations. Because the beat was busy enough and hectic enough that even playing the same beat over and over again didn't necessarily sound like it was the same beat over and over again. It had the same feeling, but it didn't, like, it was just too busy that you couldn't really focus on any one defining element. It also helps that, like, every freaking instrument that I'm playing has round robin of some sort. And the different velocity layer, which means it's going to be different. Like it's not going to be the same. If you were to A and B the same four bars played twice on top of each other, it wouldn't phase out because they'd be different samples. So like doing that, having that there means that like you're, the the option the the option B organic is much more easily attainable than previous previously. Um, yeah. So drums are good. Superior drummer in particular is named appropriately. Yes, so, um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know, and as usual, have a nice day.